come back. This is lecture 34. So in the previous lecture, we saw uh, how to use a differential amplifier in negative feedback and a quick recap. What we, we saw that if we have a differential amplifier with a current mirror load, So this is let's say VCM and we do this Incrementally, this circuit is equivalent to, in the incremental picture, this is equivalent to some GM. What is that GM? The GM is equal to GM of M1. And this is we are assuming M1 is equal to M2, right? We are assuming M1 is identical to M2 and M3 is identical to M4, right? Uh, and we are further saying that in the incremental picture, this is what that is happening. Sorry, I didn't, I shouldn't apply VI here, right? So this should be rounded. And in the incremental picture, this is what that is happening. Okay. So, one of the arguments that we made was at the fag end of the first module of uh, last lecture where uh, we, we made a comment, I made a comment that, uh, that the voltage at M1 is being driven, right? Voltage at M1 is being driven by battery VCM, but we assume that if you put in negative feedback in this way, the, this voltage will also become VCM, right? So what was the genesis of, the, of that assumption? The genesis of the assumption was the fact that this entire circuit is a negative feedback, right? So, for example, if you look to the, uh, uh, if I assume that for the time being, let's assume that you have some voltage here, right? Let's say so we have, have we have some voltage uh, v, v in. So, let's say we have an incremental voltage delta V at this node, right? If there is an incremental voltage delta V at the positive terminal, right? What is going to happen? This is going to push out some current. This is going to increase this voltage, which means this is also going to increase this voltage, right? So it will the increase this voltage. And when, if GM times R is very large, what will be the difference between these two voltages? The difference between these voltages will almost be equal to zero, or it will be equal to steady state error, right? So, if that is the case, which means that the negative feedback loop, the job, the negative feedback loop is trying to neutralize the voltages at the input of the amplifier, right, when put in negative feedback, okay. So, by the same token, what is this GM, what is this, uh, so let, if I, if I earmark this uh, with a different color, what happened here? Right. So, what is this GM? This GM is nothing but the, but the, uh, but, uh, but the circuitry that has been made using the transistors in the figure in the left. Right. So, if incrementally it is the, the GM is trying to, or the transconductor is trying to pull the two voltages uh, between its input nodes close by, the same uh, will try to happen in the transistor equivalent of it, right? So, if the other way of arguing is that, let's say this, this voltage is not exactly equal to VCM, it's slightly less than VCM, right? 
So, this voltage is less than VCM. This voltage is less than VCM. So, then what is going to happen? What do you think will be the current through, uh, through M1 and through M2? So, current, th so if this is I0, if that voltage is less than VCM, the current through M1 will be higher than I0 by 2 and current through M2 will be lower than I0 by 2. Correct? So, this current will be higher and this current will be lower, but the higher current will come, will get mirrored through M3 and M4 and it will try, it will try to increase the voltage V0, thereby try to increase the voltage VCM. And this, this, this phenomena will keep on going till, till that voltage at the feedback node, till this feedback voltage is sufficiently close to VCM, right. So, that is why if the gain is infinity, right, if the GM is infinity, for example, then these two voltages Vf will and, and the other node voltage will always be equal to, will always be equalized. Okay, that is essentially the principle. So, while doing Quiescen calculations on the negative feedback, that is why we often say that since we are trying to make a circuitry uh, with high loop gain, high gain, high gain uh, we are using a high gain amplifier to make a negative feedback, it is, it is a fair assumption to assume that the voltages at between the plus and the minus terminals of of the differential amplifier are equalized under quiescent conditions right so this is un again under the caveat that we understand they will never be exactly equal there will be a steady state error so in order to figure out the steady state error we will do some other calculation but to a first order approximation it is it is a good approximation to make that that the plus and the minus terminals of the uh, of the transconductance will be uh, will, uh, will be similar, right? Okay. So now, uh, while we were uh, at the fag end of the lecture, we also saw that what happens if we put a, or rather, if I if I show it here, what happens if I put a resistance R L here? So this this resistance R L has the effect of lowering the loop gain. Right? What is the loop gain? In the absence of RL, the loop gain was GM times KR. In the presence of RL, the loop gain becomes GM times KR parallel RL. Right? So, if the loop gain is loop gain reduces, if either RL is much smaller than KR, which means the loop gain becomes GM times RL. So, if the loop gain reduces, then all the good things of negative feedback vanish. Right? Because why? Because ultimately we know that. What do we know? We know that V0 over Vi is essentially 1 by H L by 1 plus L, right? Or GH by 1 plus GH. So, let me write in that format. GH by 1 plus GH. This can also be written as 1 over H L by 1 plus L. This can also be written as 1 by H 1 by 1 plus 1 by L, right? So, I mean, either of these uh, nomenclatures are fine, but the key thing to uh, uh, key thing to notice is that how do I get H? I get H by setting the loop gain to infinity, right? So whatever is the, if I if I set the transconductance to infinity, whatever uh, uh, whatever gain, whatever closed loop gain V not over V I will get is essentially H, right? And what should I do to get uh, the loop gain in order to loop find the loop gain? We can break the loop somewhere so that loop be remains unilateral, right? Uh, and also there is no loading, that is no current that is getting drawn. And then we apply a test voltage and check the return voltage, right? So this is what we have been doing till now. Now note that that is also not 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 a foolproof way of going about things. Uh, there are sophisticated ways of finding out loop gain even when those two criteria that I talked about are not satisfied, but they are not part of this course for now. So, what we will assume that there is a part, there is a, there is some part of, uh, we can identify some place in the circuit where there is no current going in and we will break the, we will break the loop there and try to find out the loop. Okay. Okay. Fine. So, now quickly, what is the problem of putting that RL? If RL is sufficiently low, the loop gain goes down. What happens if the loop gain goes down? Uh, if we look at this equation, if the loop gain goes down, the denominator increases, which means V0 over Vi is not 1 over H, right? H in this case was K, 
which means v not over v i will not be k it will be lesser gain than k and uh, note that loop gain is what loop gain is, is a function of gm gm times something and gm is a function of temperature Df, gm is a function of process voltage temperature right so which means that in order to make v not over vi this gain closed loop gain independent of process voltage temperature we need to at least ensure that the loop gain is very high if l is very high then v not over vi becomes insensitive to temperature variation right however if v not over vi is not very high then again we have all the bad things right uh, your gain will depend on temperature where you are what time of the day and so on right so that is we don't want so the uh, so the key thing is we are striving to get larger and larger loop gain okay so whatever modifications in the circuit that we'll do if that impacts our loop gain then we'll have to take a call and we'll have to figure out what we need to do to restore the loop gain back right why am i saying all these things i'm saying this because if let's say rl if rl gm times rl is not large enough right let's say you are in the absence of rl you are getting a loop gain of 100 you put back put in rl uh, such a small amount such, such a small value the loop gain drops from 100 to 10 right so what will impact what will affect obviously a closed loop transfer function will uh, will will get affected the steady state error will get affected right your final uh, your uh, final error will get affected and so on right so so essentially the input will not track the output or the output will not track the input accurately so 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 what uh, so to summarize what we are essentially saying is that what happens what happens if we have to drive or rather how do we drive a large load again large load means small rl or large capacitance okay so we since we have not dealt with this capacitance driving too much so let's say until now let's let's assume that we are talking about small rl for the time being okay so how can we do that so let's go back let's go back to our topology so let's say we have this let's say this is vi okay uh, let's assume you have vcm plus vi right we have vcm on top of this right so uh, even though this is a small signal model this is a fair enough assumption to assume that since the inputs are tracking each other let's assume we can apply vcm on top of that also okay okay and we need to we need to drive an rl let's make a further simplification let's say that we i mean uh, we uh, what happens if k is equal to 1 let's say we let's say we target k equal to 1 let's say target uh, assume k is equal to 1 what I means if k equal to 1 k if k is equal to 1 this is shorted right if that is shorted i mean the the stuff that is connected here r is essentially irrelevant i don't need that i can basically get rid of it because ultimately the entire feedback is entire part of the output is getting fed back to the input so this this is often called unity gain buffer right so this is often called unity gain buffer why why is this called unity gain buffer naturally you see that in this case now in this case if the feedback if the loop gain is high and the feedback is tracking each other these two voltages will be almost equal which means this voltage will be also vcm plus vi so the input output is tracking the input without any if hopefully without any attenuation right by the way what is the loop gain in this case so how will you fi find out loop gain quickly how do you find out loop gain you short the input right break the loop apply a test voltage and find out what is the return voltage right so if i do this what we get is what this current is gm times v test so this voltage is minus gm times v test times rl 
so that is equal to b returned so l l is what l is minus b returned by b test which becomes gm times r l right so once you know uh, once you know the loop gain all you have to do is to size gm in such a way that gm times r l becomes much greater than 1 and then i mean then all the good things of the loop will happen that is the input will track the output okay okay fine so let's uh, let's go back to what wherever we were uh, before we got distracted okay so let's say we are targeting an unique detail buffer and let's assume that gm let's assume that gm times rl is is comparable to one then obviously our negative feed, good things of negative feedback are, are are not applicable anymore input is not tracking the output and so on so what should we do so what what is the core problem the cop the core problem is the output impedance what is the output impedance of this guy what is r out how will you find out r out again short the input apply test voltage at the output and find out the test current we have done this multiple times the R out in this case is 1 over GM, right? GM RL approximately equal to 1 means what? The R out is approximately equal to RL, right? Which means this is a problem because we will not be able to drive this RL efficiently. Okay, so what? So what's the solution? How did we tackle these solutions before? So we were we, we might as well think of putting a voltage buffer. Correct. We, we may as well think of putting a voltage buffer between the between this GM and RL, and that might might help us. Correct. So, what is the simplest voltage buffer that we know of? A common drain amplifier, right? It's a volt, voltage control voltage source gain of unity, right? So, let's do that. So, let's do that. So, let's put a common drain amplifier. So let's say, let's put a common drain amplifier here and okay, so even before I connect, I, I, I do this and let's say I have to drive it, drive the RL and we know how to drive RL now, right? We can drive RL through a capacitor of value C infinity and all. So those things are taken care. Uh, so now can you tell me can you tell me where should I connect this V naught should I connect V naught to the positive terminal of the GM or should I connect V naught to the negative terminal of the GM. So let us say we connect V naught to the positive terminal of the GM to start off right. So then how do we know how do we go about ascertaining whether uh, the, our negative feedback loop is indeed in the right direction or not. What should we do? We can assume that there is a hypothetical excitation somewhere in the loop. Let's say there is an excitation here. The voltage increases. What is what is going to happen to the voltage uh, at the output of the GM? This guy will increase. If that guy increases, what's happening to V naught? It's a buffer without an inversion, so this voltage also increases, which means there is a positive feedback which means this is not correct. So what we can essentially do is to say that this has to be connected to the negative terminal. Right. Okay. So if you want to test it out, let's do, do the test once more. If this increases, this increases, sorry, if this increases, this voltage decreases because I am applying the excitation to the negative terminal of the GM. If this decreases, this decreases, which means the loop is trying to nullify the excitation that we are hypothetically inserting okay so this is this is negative feedback this is all good uh, so let's say we have vcm plus vi okay okay so how do we know uh, let's say this is i2 uh, or let's we had like uh, let's say this is uh, m5 and let's say this call this i2 fine uh, so, uh, so, so, what do you think? Will this structure be able to drive our uh, our RL? 
how do we know how do we go about figuring that out again same old test we will have to find out the output resistance right so how do we find out output resistance so same old test right so we, we let's let's assume this is there for the time being and let's apply a, let's apply an incremental p test note that all these things have to be done in the incremental domain but i am i am sure by now we are all very comfortable with analyzing incremental models without replacing the transistors with their incremental equivalent we can do all those things in our head so so let's go ahead and do this this i test also i2 also goes out because incrementally that doesn't make any sense mm, that's open so if this is v test this guy is shorted right and so what is this voltage is v test right if that voltage is v test what do you think oh by the way i forgot to put the output resistance of the gm right i forgot to put the output resistance of the gm so this is hard or not this is incremental output resistance or not uh, so if that voltage is v test right what is going to be the voltage uh, on r not it will be minus gm times r not times v test correct okay if that is the if the if the gate voltage of m5 is minus gm times r not times v test and the source voltage is v test how much current uh, by the way uh, there will be an incremental current through m5 in which direction the incremental current will flow note that incremental current is gm times vgs pointing down, downwards but in this case source is positive and gate is negative in the direction we have uh, in the way we have marked the uh, excitations which means the current will be moving upwards right so upwards of value gm5 times v, vsg in this case which is v test times 1 plus gm times r not correct so what is r, r, r out what is r out r out becomes 1 by gm5 1 plus gm times r not right so if gm r not is much higher than 1 this becomes 1 by gm5 times gm times not as long as this is much lesser than rl we should be able to we should be able to drive right so uh, why is this a better configuration than the previous one in the previous one the output resistance was what in the previous one output resistance was 1 over gm in this case output resistance is 1 over gm but it has been reduced by a factor of gm5 times r not right okay so you can see that immediately we are making a much better voltage buffer right we are making a much better voltage buffer by putting two of the stages stages together okay so so let's sketch it again So if we if we ensure that if we ensure high loop gain, right? By the way, what is the loop gain? What is the loop gain in the of the structure? What is L? How do we figure out what is L? We do the same thing. We short this, open this, apply V test. Right. So we we have some R naught here. This is GM. And find out what is the uh, find out what is the uh, return voltage, right? So this is V return. What will be V return? So let's do let's do this. So this becomes minus GM times R naught times V test, right? So what is this voltage? If C is large enough, if C is large enough, this becomes GM five by one plus GM five RL. So which means. Uh, which means this voltage becomes V return becomes 
whatever was the gate voltage that is minus gm times r naught times b test times gm5 by 1 plus gm5 rl right which means look in l is minus v return by v test which is gm r naught times gm5 by 1 plus gm5 rl okay so in the absence of the second stage in the absence of m5 what would loop can have been the loop can would have been gm times rl right so now in this case i am kind of isolating the i am isolating the gm times r naught terms i am not allowing rl to load the gain of the first stage because as long okay i think i made a mistake here it will gm5 rl times right yeah so uh, so as you can see that as long as we can ensure that gm5 rl is uh, is not two less than one even if gm5 rl is like one or two or something like that then also we'll get we'll get a decent enough loop gain and rl uh, uh, the loop gain is not directly proportional to rl anymore right so since the loop gain is not directly proportional to rl anymore which means it dependent the dependency of the loop gain on the final load that is driving reduces which means this becomes a better uh, it becomes a better amplifier a uh, better uh, driver okay okay fine so so this is this is all good so let's put the transistor level block diagrams together Okay, so what will be the transistor level block diagram instead of this pulse GM? We'll have to put replace that GM with our transistor level equivalent. Okay, so this is VCM plus VI. Uh, this the first output node right let's say vo1 this is the vo1 this vo1 goes to m5 and this goes to i2 right and here i have rl this is the final v0 and this V0 is connected to the negative terminal of the input. What is the negative terminal? This is the negative terminal. So these two get connected together. Right? So this becomes your uh, this becomes a, a voltage buffer which can drive enhanced loads, right? Because ultimately it can drive a, a much smaller value of RL than the single stage configuration could have. Now the question uh, to you is we we could have as well i mean what is so holy about choosing an m5 uh, for for driving the output load a common run amplifier can as well be made using a pmos transistor right what i am essentially saying is this i could have as well said that this second stage ultimately this has to be a second i mean this this is a ultimately we are making incrementally this right uh, we are making a common drain amplifier right a common drain amplifier can as well be a pmos transistor like this and i flip the minus and the plus to the sign this will also be fine right so if that were the case this architecture would have been something like this and output would have been connected here right so this would have been m5 so why not this structure 
why uh, why did we choose the other structure uh, that is with the nmos second stage now one might argue that we can uh, we can use either of them depending upon the situation and that is the absolutely right answer but what situation that's the answer, that's the question to ask right now the in, in in the incremental sense you can use either you can use either the nmos second stage or the pmos second stage right or other nmos m5 or pmos m5 right so but the issue is the following issue is that of quiescent voltage right so what do you think is the range of voltage of v1 for which the first stage will work properly right so what do you think so v1 is how far can v1 go v1 can go at least one overdrive to closer towards vdd and on the bottom side how far can it go this can go to vcm minus threshold voltage now depending upon what is vdd what is vcm this seems like v01 is closer to vdd than to than to ground right so if i say this is this is the whole range and this is let's say v mid then v01 is likely to be here v01 is likely to be situated in the top half right quiescent wise if that is the case and we want to use v01 to drive m5 and i choose m5 to be a pmos transistor what do you think is the required quiescent voltage for m5 for m5 to work properly so if this if the using the configuration that we have if the circuit operates properly the output will be vcm right under quiescent if output is vcm under quiescent what do you think the gate voltage of m5 will be this will be vcm minus vsg of m5 right if this becomes vcm minus vsg of m5 so what do you think uh, what do you think will be the value b so let's say vdd is equal to let's take some example let's say vdd equal to 3 volt v overdrive let's say is i don't know maybe 100 millivolt or 200 millivolt let's say v over i mean i know in the course we have been taking v overdrive as 1 milli 1 volt throughout but that that is more or less for the ease of our calculation but in reality uh, given that our vdd supply voltages are not like 10 volt 5 volt and so on typically it's 3 volts or less with the modern technology so uh, so the overdrive voltages are also chosen appropriately the overdrive voltages are generally of the order of 100 200 millivolts right so let's assume v overdrive is 200 millivolts right so so v v01 max becomes 2.8 volt and let's say vcm is 1.5 volt somewhere in the middle and let's say threshold voltage is 500 millivolt right then what is vcm minus one threshold voltage that is one volt right and if you want uh if you want vsg of an if you want a overdrive of 200 millivolt what is vgs or vsg that becomes 700 millivolt which means this voltage becomes right 1.5 volt minus 700 millivolt that is minus 0 0.7 which is 0 0.8 volt right so as you can see this the requirement for m5 to be biased properly requires the gate of m5 to be at 0 0.8 volt but the minimum vo1 vo1 min is 1 volt which means the first stage and the the quiescent condition of the first stage and the required quiescent condition of the second stage are not are not mapped properly right they are not shaking hands properly right so that whatever is the second stage whatever quiescent condition that is the second stage wants the first stage is not able to give it but what about the what about this case so let's do the same thing let's say vdd is 3 volt and let's say vcm is i don't know maybe same 1.5 volt okay so so what do you expect 
uh, the gate voltage of M52B in this case, you expect this to be 1.5 plus VGS of M5, right? So, VGS of M5 is again, let us say 0.7 volt. So, this becomes 2.2 volt, right? So, that is well within the range of, well within the range of the first stage quiescent output voltages. So, it is because of this reason often, often an NMOS second stage is preferred if the first stage is also, also has an NMOS input pair. Right. If the first stage were a PMOS input pair, right? If if we had a PMOS differential amplifier, then the second stage also we would have preferred it to be a, a PMOS second stage. Okay. Okay. 